Hi everyone and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey and in this video tutorial we're going to be working on our tower defense. We're going to add money whenever we kill an enemy and we're also going to make our towers upgradable. So let's roll that introduction and get right into it. <laughs> So we're going to start off by adding money whenever we kill an enemy. So let's open up our object enemy, go into the crate event, and right here at the bottom where we have the hurt function, before we destroy the instance, all we want to do is add some money into that global variable. So we're going to say global.cashamount plus equals 10, and that will give us $10 every single time we kill the enemy. So the next thing we need to do is actually make it so we can select our towers. So let's open up our parent tower here and inside the create event, we'll maximize it and underneath the target, we will say is selected and let's set that to false. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna only draw the radius of the tower when we select the tower. So inside the draw event, we're gonna change this up. So we are gonna say if is selected equals true then what do we want to do? Well, we will say draw radius. So this means that we're going to have to move some of our code around. Let's take the radius code and put it up top and we can clear out everything else. So with this radius, we want to make sure that it's going to be a full circle. So it's going to be fully opaque. So we're going to change the last parameter to false. Now I also want to set the alpha value instead of being a full alpha to be something like 0.1. I also want to draw a black outline on this radius. So I'm going to copy everything and paste it below, change my color to C black, change the alpha to 0.5. And then again, I'm going to change the outline parameter to say true. So we will just have a black outline on it. Now, because we are setting the alpha value, we have to make sure that we reset it down below. So we'll just reset the alpha value to one. So now that we're done with our draw code, we need a way to actually select the towers. So to do this, let's actually open up the object in it. And inside the create event, we're going to create a new global variable. We'll say global dot selected tower. And let's set this to no one to start off with. Now to handle this global variable, we are going to create a function here. So let's create a new script and let's just call this towers. So in this function, we are going to have a tower select and we are also going to have a new function called tower deselect and we will be using both of them. So basically what's going to happen is when we call the tower select, we are going to pass in a tower that we want to have selected. So this means that we are going to have to deselect any tower that we currently have. So we'll call that function below. And then once we have deselected the tower, we will set our global variable to the actual tower that needs to be selected. And then with the selected tower, we will set the is selected variable to be equal true. We can get away with this because the global variable is going to hold an instance of whatever tower we have selected. And as we just did, we had that variable, which will select the tower. So to handle the deselection of the tower, first we need to make sure that the global variable does not equal no one. And if it does not equal no one, then we know that we currently have a tower. So we could say is selected equals false. And then what we can do is update that global variable to set it to no one, which means that we don't have any tower. Now, before we can test this, we actually need to select a tower. So let's go into the tower parent. Let's add a new event and let's add a mouse and we will use left release. All we have to do is call the function and then pass in the ID. And this ID is a built in variable and it's going to be whatever instance we have created here. So if I hit F5, let's see if we have any errors. I'm going to build a machine gun tower and then I will select it. And you can see we have the radius here. I'll build a bomb tower and then select that. And you can see that things are being deselected and select it as we go. So the next thing we need to do is display some information up here at the bottom whenever we select one of these towers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my user interface and go into panels and duplicate this shop panel. And I'm going to name it the panel upgrade. I'm going to open up my room here, which is the main game, go into the UI layer and just put the upgrade panel in here and then double click on it on the properties. Now I know the scale, so if you're following along, you want the X scale of 175 and the Y scale of 30. Now the position doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna stick it in at 608 and then the Y position will be 736. Now with this little bit of information here, we can open up the upgrade panel and go to the create event and I'm gonna maximize this because we're gonna be changing a bunch of stuff in here. 
So we need to update the hidden and shown values. So the hidden X and shown X will be the same, which is 608. The hidden Y value is gonna be 896. And the shown version of that is gonna be 736. Now we also don't need the tower buttons here. So we're gonna make sure that we are in the correct panel, which is the upgrade. And we are going to delete all of the tower information. Now, the one thing that I do wanna have in here is the tower name, level, damage, and upgrade costs, as this is what we're gonna show the user whenever they click on something. So I'm gonna add those variables and I'll just add them in at the top with some default values. Now, the next step is going to be to actually draw the specific panel. So we are gonna use a draw event here. And inside here, we need to reset some of the values just in case we were changing them in another function. So we will use a draw set alpha as one. So we'll reset that draw set color as C white. So we'll reset the color and then we can go ahead and draw ourselves, which will be the stretched out panel. The next thing we need to do is worry about the text. So I will use a draw set and I will set our horizontal align to left. And then we will have some draw text calls here. Now, one thing to keep in mind with our panel itself is the X and Y position is right here in the middle. And because it's stretched out, I really don't want to deal with too much math. So I'm going to get away with using things like B box left and B box top, which will put everything in the top left corner here. So to show what I mean is using draw text, I'm going to start off on the left side and I'm just going to add a padding of 16. For the top, I'll use the B box top and then add a panel, sorry, padding of 16. And in here, I'm just gonna write the tower and give it the name, which is tower name. And this is a variable within our panel. And then inside here, we are gonna have something like level. And then we need to make sure that we pass in the string version of whatever level we are on, plus closing off our brackets. So this will say tower, we'll give the tower name, level, and that will be the current level. The next thing I wanna do is I want to display the actual current damage. So I'll copy this and paste it below. And like I said, I don't really wanna deal with too much math. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 30 pixels, which will add it down to the next line. So I'm gonna upgrade what I wanna to say to say current damage. And we're going to set the variable to say tower damage and get, rest of, get rid the rest of the string copy and paste again and instead of saying current damage i'm going to say upgrade cost we'll set another 30 pixels down and then the string that we want to use is going to be the upgrade cost so before we can actually show this panel itself we need to figure out the best way on where to call it well we made this function here which will select the tower so i think that's going to be actually the best thing we can do so what we can do is we only have one upgrade panel in our room. So I can get away with just calling the object UI panel upgrade, and then that will give me access to everything within that particular panel. For example, if I wanna set the tower name, then I can set it to the global selected tower, and then I can use just the name, which is a variable based off of the instances here. So I'm just gonna skip ahead and paste the rest of them in here. So now that we have all the different variables filled in, the last thing we need to do is just call the show function, which will actually show the panel. Now, if I run my game, everything should be working. I say should because we're going to click the build menu, build a machine gun, and let's build a bomb tower. So if I click the machine gun, we come across the first error. So let's fix this error. And the error that I have is within my paste code here. I had selected tower twice. I'm going to run my game again and uh, we're going to check to see if we have any more issues once again we will build a machine gun and let's build a bomb tower if we select our machine gun you can see where i have our panel come up it says machine gun the level the damage the upgrade cost if i select the tower it's already there and the information is changing indeed now let's go ahead and fix some of these issues, which is gonna be the close button. And let's actually add some functionality to upgrade these towers. So I'm gonna close everything and make sure my workspace is nice and clean. I'm gonna go into buttons and go into shop. I'm gonna create a new group here and I'm just gonna call this upgrades. And inside here, I'm gonna duplicate the close button and I'm gonna say close underscore upgrades. And I'm just gonna drag it into the proper folder. So this particular instance here, inside our panel, where we actually put the close button, which is right here, we need to update what close button we want. 
So we are going to be using the close upgrades. Now we don't have to worry about the X and Y position because if we open up the close upgrade button inside the step event, this is where we're actually going to be changing it. So right now the X is gonna be the parent plus 16. And if you remember the X and Y position of that actual panel itself is going to be in the middle. So what we are going to do is we are going to upgrade this to say the X is going to be the parent's B box right, which will put us all the way over at the right. And then we're gonna bring back whatever the width of the closed UI button is, plus a padding of 16. And for simplicity sakes, we are pretty much gonna do the exact same thing for the Y position, except we are going to use the sprite get height. So now if we run our game, we should have a close button in the correct spot. So let's create a machine gun. Let's click it and you can see that we have the close button there. So the next thing we need to do is the actual add the upgrade button. Let's duplicate the close button and let's say this is going to be the purchase upgrade button. We'll open this up. Let's change the sprite to the upgrade sprite. And then let's go into the step event. We'll maximize this and let's increase what we have here to also include the icon upgrade. So we are adding the width of the close button and the upgrade and then our padding. So that should move it over approximately 32 pixels. Now, before we can actually see this, let's open up our upgrade panel. We'll open up the crate event. And what we need to do is inside here where we have the close, we're also gonna have the purchase button. So we are going to copy and paste this information here. And then we are going to put in the actual purchase upgrade button. I'm gonna rename mine just so I don't have the number two in there. And that should make that blue. So if we were to run our game, we should see this upgrade button, but it's not gonna actually upgrade anything. But let's make sure that it is in the correct place. So you can see we have the upgrade and then the close button. So for the upgrade, this is actually gonna be pretty easy. And then left release, this is what we're going to do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to check to make sure that we do have a tower selected. So we wanna make sure that the tower selected does not equal no one. And then the next thing we wanna do is to make sure that the global.cache amount is going to be bigger or equal to whatever our selected tower is. And we need to make sure that we check out the upgrade price. So as long as we have more money than our upgrade, then we can say the global dot cash amount is gonna be minus equal, whatever our upgrade costs. And then for that particular tower, we are just gonna call a function that we're gonna write, and we will just call this upgrade. And the final thing that we need to do is we need to actually refresh the labels because we set them at the start. So we could just call that tower underscore select function. And then we just pass in the current tower that's already selected. So it will be deselected and reselected. And basically the labels are just going to refresh. So let's go ahead and let's open up our object parent here, which is going to write our upgrade function. We'll make sure we go to the create event and down here at the bottom, we will say upgrade and it's going to equal a new function. So this is going to happen across any of the instances that we call. So I'm not going to do some real math for this, but basically we are just going to increase the level of our tower by one. We are going to take our bullet damage and increase it by two. We are going to take the upgrade price and increase it by whatever the upgrade price is divided by five. And then finally, we are going to increase our radius a little amount by whatever the radius is divided by 10. So if I hit F5, let's see what we have here. So we should be able to build a machine gun tower. If I click on it, it gets selected. Our current damage is one, our upgrade cost is 75. If I click the upgrade button, you can see we're at level two, the radius increased, the current damage is two, and the upgrade cost is 90. I can close this, I could build a new tower such as a bomb tower. If I select this tower, I can upgrade it as long as I have enough cash. You can see that the current damage is 10, the upgrade cost is 120, and I can keep going and it will continuously increase and get more expensive over time. But you can see that everything is working. So I know this was a long tutorial. I hope you stayed with me and I hope you learned some things. I'll see you in the next one. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the video. A special shout out to those who have decided to support me through Patreon. Ashby, Ian, Timothy, Edward, Victor, Paul, Ian, Alex, and Robert. Once again, thank you for everyone for watching. If you like the channel, please hit that subscribe button and help get the word out. Thank you once again.